Hello, everyone, and welcome along to the Blood Red podcast, courtesy of the Liverpool Echo. I'm your host, Patrick Smith, and we're here to hopefully bring you that Friday feeling ahead of Liverpool beginning their defence of the FA Cup tomorrow night or Saturday night, whenever you're listening to this, against Wolverhampton Wanderers at Anfield. Well, joining me today, we have one of the finest panels Echo Towers can offer, starting with our chief LFC writer, Ian Doyle. Hello, Doyle. Hello there. How are you? We've also got... <laughs> I'm good, Doyle. Thank you for asking. No this problem. Is pod, number th- pod number three for me, so... Not gone too wrong just yet. I'm sure you're going to be testing me throughout the pod as usual. We've also got our Liverpool FC writer, Theo Squires. Theo, welcome along. Hi, Pat. I would ask you how you are again, but Doyley's already covered that. So I'm good. Well, there we go. And rounding off this star-studded show, we have our in-house Merseyside women's football expert, Beth Linda. Hi, Beth. Hi, Pat. You okay? I am good. That's three out of three. (laughs) That's enough about me. Let's get stuck right in. It's felt like a very long week for everyone associated with the club. Doyle, we don't want to dwell on Brentford. I mean, there's lots of negatives. It'll take too long. One big negative that's come out is Virgil van Dijk. Klopp's confirmed he's going to be absent for a couple of weeks. He said weeks, not months, which is slightly more promising. But is this a cause for concern for Liverpool? Well, if your best defender's injured for a month, then I'd say, yeah, it's a bit of a worry. Um, I mean, it's it's kind of. I mean, I don't know exactly when he got injured, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's when he had that run against against Buemo, who just ran away from him in the first half, and Allison had to make a save. That was right in front of us, so we we did think, you know, something's not quite right here. But we didn't expect uh, a bit to be an injury of, of this magnitude. Obviously, after the game, Klopp was like, "Well, he wanted to play on, but I subbed him." You know, he even said like, "I subbed him," and the fitness guys were like, "Well, I've actually made up with that." Because they thought, well, that, that'll save him from, you know, further hampering any any potential issue that he got. So, can you imagine what it would have been like had he just played on? So, I suppose, you know, small mercies and all that. But for Liverpool, it's a blow, even though you say Van Dijk hasn't been at his best since since the World Cup, really. And I think he's he's not going to be the only one. I think there's this great unknown. We're not going to know how so many of the players who played in the tournament, not just Liverpool, but look at it all across the across Europe, across the world, how players are third and. Uh, I think it's going to be tricky for, for quite a few of them, but but for Liverpool to, you know, at least they've got, again, Canati's back, but he's somebody who played in the final and you saw what happened to him against Brentford. I actually thought he did okay in terms of the overall game, but if you score an own goal, then you're at fault for the last goal and you're never going to get a particularly, you know, great review of your performance. Um, Matip only came back for injury. Well, yeah, well, he got, well, he got a five. He got a five. What did he expect? <laughs> you know, he was, on, he was on for a seven at half time. Um well, well, seven, seven until the own goal, I should say. Uh, Matip is obviously he's only just come back as well, so, and Gomez has been the one player who's been available all the way through the season. But two things: one, he's looked a lot better at right back, and the second thing is he, his his form has just not been very consistent. He can be so good at home against Manchester City in the Premier League, and then when he played Manchester City in the in the Carabao Cup a couple of weeks ago, he he was not particularly great until he went to right back. Actually, Nat Phillips is there as well, but. Yeah, it's not great. I think, um, again, it's a sign of, you know, Van Dijk is one of those players who plays practically every game if he's available. And if you take that kind of player out of your team, it's going to affect you. We saw what happened in the 2020-21 uh, season when he wasn't there. Although, to be fair, by the end, nobody was there, so which was a you know, bit of an issue for Liverpool. I don't think we're going to be seeing Nat Phillips and Reese Williams being centre-backs for, centre-back pairing for Liverpool t- t- during the last weeks of the season, because if we do, something's gone spectacularly wrong, and that's no... You know, that's, that's no slight on those two. It's just the the options that Liverpool do still have available at the moment. So, not great, but you could argue even that possibly Van Dijk needed a rest anyway, just not like this. Yeah, I mean, great respect to Phillips and Williams. I mean, they, they were the reason to qualify for the top four that year, but we don't want the flashbacks of that season with all the injury problems, do we? I mean, Theo, that's the thing. We've got, let's say, three fit first-team centre-backs left, but they've all got their injury problems, haven't they? I mean, this could very quickly turn into a similar crisis, couldn't it? You say that, I wouldn't mind Nat Phillips starting if they meant they got the um, top four again. This stage, it's a similar scenario. You just scenario. want Nat Phillips starting because he used to play for Bolton. Come on, let's, let's be honest about <laughs> it. Come on, it's I the Bolton I just need to be exclusive interview with him every exactly. year, don't he's, I? Exactly, he's, he's been sustaining <laughs> you for years. <laughs> he's the reason I've got this job. But yeah, um, it is one where these centre-backs have got injury issues and it's something that we say year after year. It's not quite the uh, stance it was with Lovren, where one of the t- three would get the place alongside Van Dyke, and they'd have it until they get injured, and then someone takes it until they get injured, and then someone takes it until they get injured. But it is a concern. I think Doyley covered it potentially in a piece this week, 
where how much game time Matip and Canate have missed this season. And like when one of them comes back, the other one, they were lost to injury as well. And it's only really last year that Joel Matip hasn't had an injury-prone season for Liverpool. It's very risky if you are going into these big games. And we know how intense the fixture list is going to be second half of the season if you're not able to rotate them because the players are breaking down with injuries. When you've got the World Cup in there as well, maybe that gives Joel Matip a bit of an advantage here and Joe Gomez because they haven't had to go all the way out to Qatar. But it's about balancing it here. It's like with this FA Cup game, I know Klopp said in his press conference, it's not about rotation. They've had enough time to rotate, um, rest the legs and go again. But I'd be starting that Phillips in one of this. You don't want to put both Canate and Matip in there because you've got bigger games to come. It's a, a lose-lose situation playing this FA Cup game. Because if you lose it, then crisis has got even worse. If you win it, it's another fixture that you probably don't really want to have. And you need to keep these players fit, find some form between them and get a partnership. And that's another issue with it because Virgil van Dijk has been the go-to. He's been the centre-back who is always fit. It's always him and someone else. There isn't really a blossoming partnership between the others that you can say step up and take that place. It is learning on the job. Like Van Dijk, even though he came back from that serious ACL injury, I think he only missed four games last season, like Premier League and Champions League. Two of them were because of COVID. The other two were because he came off in the FA Cup final with was it a knee injury. So he missed one game and then he was unused sub on the last day of the season. It's a stark contrast to what you say about the likes of Gomez and Matip. Just need one of them to step up, take the shirt, make sure Liverpool don't miss Van Dijk. But we said the exact same thing when Van Dijk did his ACL. And within a couple of months, both of them had uh, season-ending injuries. So hopefully not repeat the injuries, but a repeat of the makeshift uh, back four, somehow getting Liverpool into the top four again. Can I, can I just pick, pick Theo up on a point there? Did you just say that you hope Liverpool get beat against Wolves? You <laughs> no, I said it's lose-lose. You did say that, didn't you? You did I said, say if that. they lose, it's crisis <laughs> even worse. If they win, it's just another game that you don't really want to play. Oh, everyone in the I, think, comments. I think as the as the holders of the FA Cup, I suspect they might want to still be in it after Saturday. Anyway, sorry. I suspect the comments will be ripping you to shreds. Theo, yeah, make sure you give them plenty of stick in there, everyone. Nothing I new mean, there, is it? That's one. <laughs> I mean, Beth Theo and Doyle have been very nice to Joe Gomez. That I'm not going to be as nice. I think he's been really poor at centre back this season. He's sort of living off the reputation of that great performance against Man City. I don't think we've seen Joe Gomez be that good, if I'm honest, for the past couple of years. He's been good at right back, but not at centre back. Do you think Nat Phillips really has a case? I mean, not just for this game, but maybe for the remainder of the season. So, you know, I've come in, I've done a solid job, much more solid than Joe Gomez, in my personal opinion. Do you think Nat Phillips can really be knocking on the door to get a chance now? I think you could argue, sort of, when you look certainly at, at Nat Phillips's reputation, you can't really think of, of many sort of major blunders that he's made he's you know he's he did a solid job when he came in obviously in that that run to Liverpool get in the top four um I think most Liverpool fans I would imagine would feel more confident with Joe Gomez on the pitch however I do agree with you I think you know he was he was superb against Manchester City and then the other games he played in and around that period you know he gave that goal away against Leeds he gave a free kick away which led to, to Forrest's goal and then almost cost us against West Ham as well when he conceded the penalty. So I don't feel particularly confident when Joe Gomez is on the pitch. He's a player I'd absolutely love to kick on for us. But I do think sort of you go back to that start of the 18-19 season when him and Virgil started that that partnership and they were so solid and he looked like he was, you know, destined for the very top, but injuries and a lack of regular game time has perhaps sort of dented that a little bit. So I do think Nat Phillips does have a case. I just think Joe Gomez's pace is such an asset that, you know, that's obviously where, where Phillips is lacking. So I would still expect Klopp to, in the big games, turn to Gomez if either Matip or Canate was unavailable. But I think, you know, it's Phillips was potentially someone who was maybe looking at leaving the club in, in January. There were rumours that, you know, he might go elsewhere. But I think now, obviously, with that injury to Van Dijk, we might see him sticking around for, for a little bit longer. That's exactly yeah, the case with Phillips, isn't it? If he had pace, yeah. he'd probably be first choice because he's the best defender. If he was as good on the ball as Joel Matip, he'd probably be first choice because he is that solid player there. I'm not going, you're, you're going just strong here. Come on, please. You're supposed to be the biggest supporter. He's got a, what, you say about Nat, what you would say about Nat Phillips, he's got a tremendous attitude, and a tremendous attitude takes you very far if you're in the kind of position of he's essentially the fifth choice centre back. Because when he comes in, he doesn't let anybody down. 
as, as, as Beth said. And <laughs> to tack on Haaland when he came on against City the other week, I mean, that was probably the highlights of the game for me. Um, but but I do think that, basically, if Van Dijk doesn't get injured, I think Phillips may have gone this in January, yeah. and now he probably can't. Well, this can. is something that we said in the summer, and the January before yeah, that, exactly, and then yeah. the summer <laughs> before <laughs> that, and the January before that. Getting injured to keep him. He's like, yeah, I mean... I suppose there's a good option to have in the squad as that big physical presence. If you need that in a specific game, it's always handy to have, let's say you're playing inside a user. But let's say Diego Costa was still playing for Wolves and would play at the weekend. You'd probably want Nat Phillips playing over Joe Gomez against him, for example, is the case for keeping him, I think. Well, I'll stay with you, Dorley, because someone else who missed training, I'm not sure if he's injured or not, maybe you could clear this up for us, was Naby Keita. Now, there's plenty of rumours surrounding him. I mean, we've spoken about him on numerous pods, contract obviously expiring in the season. He was absent from Liverpool training. Is he injured? Do we know? Or is there some other reason why he's not part of the squad at the moment? No, we don't know, to be honest. Liverpool aren't really saying. Um, it probably at any time of the year, if you say Naby Kate is injured, you've probably got a 50% chance of being right. Um, I do think that... To be fair, I actually thought he did well when he came on second half against Brentford. I thought he looked exactly like the kind of player that Liverpool need. And I've always said, despite what some people on the internet say... I've always said that there's a player there, and I, I'd be playing him as often as, as he physically can be because he gives he's, he's somebody who can carry the ball in midfield and looks forward. And, and you know, I'd, I'd say Thiago does that as well, but Thiago isn't quite as mobile as as Cater. Uh, and it's <laughs> I mean, I wrote a piece last year. It was amazing how many times Cater and Thiago subbed each other. You know, they'd always be like that kind of player we just replace. And I think it was around about the time I can't remember if they played exactly, but certainly in the cup semi final against um, City, they both played, didn't they? That's probably one of Cater's best games for Liverpool. So mm. I do think that there's a player there, but whether or not he's going to be there by the end of the season, I mean, at the moment, he's obviously going to leave at the end of the season, but he could go in January. There's interest from Germany. Uh, but the only the only way that he would go in January is if Liverpool are signing a midfielder. And the only way Liverpool will be signing a midfielder is if it's somebody who's going to be not just for this season, but for the next five after that. So then you're thinking, well, there's a very... Not a few amounts of, of midfielders, but there's a lot less than perhaps there would be otherwise. So we'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, Kate here. I mean, desperately this way, if he's fit, I'd play him against Wolves. But we'll come to that in a bit. Yeah, I mean, Theo, we'll come to you on transfers and midfielders. I'll choose your brilliant article on the week. I'll get you to touch on that. But I'll come to you before that, Beth, because Jordan Henderson's come back to Liverpool training after he missed Brentford with concussion. I mean, that's going to be a big boost to the squad. He had a very decent World Cup, I think. A World Cup addition, perhaps going to come back into that right-hand side of the midfield where Naby Keita maybe would have been. Would you be starting Jordan Henderson at the weekend or would you make sure he's all OK with that concussion protocol? Yeah, I think obviously the medical team will be keeping on top of, of how, how fit he is and, and, you know, obviously not taking any risks. So, you know, I wouldn't take a chance if the, there are any potential problems. But providing he's, he's fit and firing, then I'd definitely get him back in there, I think. As you said, he, he performed well at the World Cup, maybe hasn't had his, his best season in, in a Liverpool shirt. Same could be said probably for every member of the squad apart from Alisson, really. But um, I, th I think the, the more options Liverpool have in midfield, the better at the moment. Um, you know, we, we were really thin on the ground against against Brentford. Um, I was surprised to see uh, Elliot start over Cater, to be honest. As, as Ian said, I think when Cater came in, he offered something a little bit different. Um, and I think obviously one thing it's sort of, it's, you sound like you're repeating yourself when you talk about this with Jordan Henderson, but his leadership ability on, on the pitch, you know, I do think one thing with, with Van Dijk is I don't think he's a great captain when it comes to, to being, a, being a Liverpool captain. I don't think he marshals the players in the way that Jordan Henderson does. Um, so I think having him back firstly for his ability, but also for his, his leadership qualities as well is can, you know, can only be a positive thing for, for Liverpool going forward. Yeah, he's missed quite a bit of this season through injury. Would you be starting him over Harvey Elliott hypothetically, Beth. I mean, would you choose to start him over Elliott or do you back the youngster? Jordan Henderson or Yeah, Matthew. Henderson. Um yeah, I think I feel for Harvey Elliott really because I think he's had to bear the brunt of quite a lot of criticism over the past few weeks. You know, he's only 19 years old and yeah, he's being deployed pretty much as as a first choice midfielder and starting a number of games that maybe if, if Liverpool had invested in the summer as a lot of fans wanted them to do, you know, he, he maybe wouldn't have been been getting that game time. So I think I think there's definitely a player in there with Elliot, but I don't think he's necessarily, you know, the right answer for Liverpool at the moment. He's still learning, he's still developing. So yeah, I would I would go Henderson over Elliot. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree. I think it'd be more effective in the current situation. As you said, those leadership skills would definitely come in handy. Well, Theo, we'll come to you because we spoke, well, we spoke on the last podcast, we spoke off air after the last Brother Red podcast <laughs> about needing that genie Wijnaldum replacement. Now, you've written a big article on the Echo site, Theo. You think you found the genie Wijnaldum replacement? Tell us a bit about him. Uh, I wouldn't go that far because I'd be surprised. You've, sc- you've scouted him, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just how it's been dressed up. But it he's was ba- um... he's backtracking. He's backtracking. Come on, <laughs> it's a courage of your convictions, Theo. I can't even say his name right. So this is how well it's going. It's, it's the Dutch lad who There we go. It's the Dutch lad who set up the equaliser against Argentina in the last minute with the free kick. Now Liverpool were first linked with him two years ago uh, when Genie was leaving. Um, I think fans got a bit excited at the time because he was at AZ Alkmaar and they looked at his stats and said, oh, he's got 16, 17 goals in this season. But then you look at the goals and they're pretty much all penalties, a few free kicks, a few headers from corners. But he does offer a decent overall package in the terms of he can play as a number six, he can play as a number eight and he can play as a centre-back. And Liverpool just so happened to be in need of another player who can play as a number eight. Uh, an alternative to Fabinho at number six and potentially another centre-back cover when you've got Van Dijk getting this hamstring injury. But he's been one of the best players in Serie A so far this season. He was captain of AZ Alkmaar, I think, in his early 20s. Um, He's left-footed, so he brings that bit of balance. He's good on the ball. And I think the reports were saying he's another player that Pep Linders likes to look of. And we know his involvement in Liverpool's transfers recently when you think of his involvement for Diogo Jota, Darwin Nunes, Luis Diaz and now... Cody Gakpo. There have been reports, I think, out in Italy, maybe linking him with Liverpool. And it's just one, what, are they just speculating because it's very easy to piece it together? Or is it one where there is a bit of interest there? Lynn just has been watching him. And the reports that Liverpool have been scouting him all season long. And as we know, they were reports there two, three years ago of Liverpool interest. But then it's one where I think the price was 35 million. So if Liverpool were able to do a transfer for a midfielder this month, you'd expect it to be at that sort of fee as how they managed to get in Cody Gakpo. They're not going to be able to go and bring in an Enzo Fernandez or a Jude Bellingham for 100 million plus. But Klopp has already said it's not Monopoly. They can't spend loads this month. Cody Gakpo arriving has impacted their other business and maybe they'll need to have a player leave, whether that's Naby Keita as Doyle's touched on. Nat Phillips would have raised a bit of a fee if they found a buyer for him, but he might now have to stay put. So it's all... Like, it's After your late. comments on him, Theo, his price has crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But then it's one where you can see why it would make sense, you can see why it would add up, but then it could just be a name that's been thrown there, a bit of naughtiness from an agent. Uh, I wouldn't put my money on it just yet happening. But yeah, it's maybe one to keep an eye on if Liverpool do make a move towards the end of the month, we'll see. I think it's the right profile of midfielder they need, though, because... A set piece taker, I think, is actually quite an important thing they need because Trent, granted, has been decent in the past. He's not scored a free kick for quite a while, I think. And goals from midfield as well is something we really, really crave. But Dolly, let's move on then to another young Dutchman who captain decided at an early age and impressed in the area of visit. It's Cody Gakpo. He's going to make his debut, or well, hopefully going to make his debut against Wolves at the weekend. Jürgen Klopp spoke at length in his press conference about the excitement he has ahead of his potential debut. What do you think we can expect from him? Yeah, <clears throat> probably expect him to play on the left wing given that nobody else can for Liverpool. So I think that would be a good start. Um, in terms of him, I don't, I don't. If, if you basically, if you expected it to be another Luis Diaz, forget it because that was just ridiculous the way that he hit the ground running and managed to, you know, just just also because it was he was with Diaz, he was coming into a team halfway through the season that was basically had to win every single game that they were playing. Obviously, a bit not far off now, but back then. There was that expectation, wasn't there? And he managed to make a team that was doing really well even better. And I think if Liverpool can get Gakpo in there and playing straight away, it'll be a bonus. But I don't think they're expecting to... Klopp even said that, you know, don't think he's going to be like Diaz because that was just a one-off. I don't even think Liverpool fans really want that. I think they just want someone who's going to be you know, contributing. I think one thing that he does, like he, Klopp said, he likes to... He can finish. He likes shooting outside the area. And I think that's something that Liverpool... Don't really do that much up, really, do they? I mean, how many goals Liverpool score from outside the area? I'm sure Theo will tell me 10 now from this season. But I think there was one by Trent, wasn't there? Two by Trent. See, I'm doing it myself. Bournemouth um, and Rangers. City was City was one, wasn't it, in the Community Shield? Oh, they're all added up now. Trent's like every goal he scored. So probably <laughs> exactly, <been> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not Trent's too many long yeah. ranges as such. Yeah, than 30 yeah you don't... Not Gerard S goals. 
Yeah, yeah. there's none like that. I mean, and to be fair, that's still not normal. But you can only score if you shoot, which is obvious, really, isn't it? But uh, he'll certainly bring something. I mean, I, I was quite interested in the fact that when he joined, he said, like, I, I played it as, as well, you saw him in the World Cup. He, he played as a false nine, <clears throat> he said. But really, he was playing on a false attack because Holland didn't have anyone up front, really, did they? They just had mm. everybody back and then him. Um, which made it a bit difficult, which might also explain why he scored that many goals. It was four in the end, wasn't it? Was it three or four? Can't be. Was it three or four? I think it was three, was it three? wasn't it? Scored in every I think it was game. Three, yeah. yeah, yeah. Three games and then game. he went to sleep. But as a false nine, he could kind of take the pressure off. He's going to take the pressure off Nunes anyway. That's the other thing, and I think we can't ignore the fact that now Nunes is not the new guy. It's going to be gag posts. People are going to be looking at him. And I think that might help Nunes. It could involve Nunes can now switch to the left or get a bit more help from the left wing rather than, you know, I think, I actually think Oxley Chamber has done really well when he came in, but he's first to admit it's not really his position. Mm. Um, I just think it'll help that they've got these players who who know what they're doing and, and, and a bit versatile in terms of the forward line because Nunes and Salah are about to start every single game since they came back. And they probably might have to start again at the weekend, depending on, on for me, I don't think he's going to be fit. So it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, I think Gakpo, if he's coming into the team, just basically, he'll probably just get told, just be yourself. And the other thing, have you seen the, the training pictures? He's about 7,000 foot tall. He's absolutely he's six four, isn't he? Like six, six foot four. four. Six foot four. I mean, and he's a winger in Holland. That shows that they, they play football, you know, slightly differently over there. Can you imagine that over here? turns up he was say he's i don't know when he went, came in from school he was like five foot eleven he's instantly going to center back isn't he or front yeah. he's not going to be playing on the wing so, so you so, just yeah, said holland I, played him up front so <laughs> that's what they did well, but yeah 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 yeah. but that's because they don't have anyone else you know we, 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 that's it um, Liverpool <laughs> won't play like that will they and he's, he is a left winger at heart so it will be interesting to see i think that uh i think the other players around will benefit and as i said i think Nunes will be the one who benefits more than anyone because the spotlight will be taken off him for a little bit I mean, it's interesting you raise his physical prowess there because that could maybe hint at a positional change in the future. I'm going to ask you on that, Beth, because obviously his preferred position is left wing. We expect, as Dolly said, him to play on the left wing definitely in the next few months with injuries to Jota and Diaz. But for his long-term Liverpool future, those two are going to come back. It's going to be difficult for him to dislodge Diaz from that starting left wing role. Obviously, we all know Diogo Jota is better out wide than he is through the middle. Do you think Gakpo maybe have to shift into becoming that you know, Firmino replacement with Firmino looking likely to leave the club in the summer with his contract expiring? I think it's hard to say at the minute. I think, I think like you say, he's obviously more accustomed to playing on the left. And I think, obviously, with the injuries at the moment, there's probably a bit of room to be be a bit flexible in terms of him and him and Nunes maybe switching over and, you know, just seeing what works best for him. You know, I think Diaz has nailed down that, that starting spot on the left when he comes back. So... But then again, you know, we don't know. He's not he's not kicked the ball for us yet. So I suppose he could be he could have a transformational impact on the squad. We don't quite know how he's gonna how he's gonna do. But I think I think like Ian said, I think the biggest thing for me is just the pressure it takes off Nunes. I think he's trying absolutely everything at the moment and it's obviously not, you know, coming off for him. And I think just having that other player, this other new kid on the block who's coming in and is also bedding into the squad, I think that can only help him and obviously gives Klopp the opportunity to rotate a little bit, which he hasn't been able to do with his, his forward line, really. So I think long-term, in terms of his position, it all just depends on on whether he hits the ground running and, and the impact that he, that he has on the squad. I'm going to say yeah, I disagree good. with you, Pat, on Jota. Jota's much better through the middle than he is out wide. That's where he I gets think he's more effective goals. than the left. He gets his goals he's from the left, I think he's better down the middle. Oh, well, so that's yeah, I'm going to continue to work. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast isn't going well for you, is it? Oh, of course. <laughs> I'll leave it to the experts, of course. But I think I'm going to ask you on this as well. We're, we're I mean, not experts, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Gakpo also can play as a number 10. I mean, we've seen Klopp before switch to that 4-2-3-1 formation. Do you think that could be something that looks like further down the line? Obviously, we're going to have a plethora of attackers come April or May when Jota and Diaz return. Is it likely, do you think, especially with the midfield troubles, to sort of go gung-ho and admit this basketball football is going to happen? Um, I think it's too early to say. Like we need to see how he beds in and then get the players back from injury and decide from there. Like Jota, he's been out what since the Man City game. That's a long layoff, having been injured in the summer and had a long layoff beforehand and then suffered a setback. Diaz, it's what knee, that's always a tricky one to come back from, especially when he suffered a setback, had to go undergo surgery. 
it's a case of they're going to take time to get up to speed and you could put your neck on the line and say Diaz isn't going to be at his best until after a pre-season. You're going to have to use him more off the bench for the final six weeks of a season, depending on what point he returns in March. So it's one in the summer where you can really then define what position Gakpo will play. Because I'd imagine, whether Firmino signs a contract or not, the signing of Gakpo should mean Jota's now a striking alternative predominantly for Nunes. And then you'd have Salah on the right with Gakpo and Diaz like competing for the left with one of them able to be the alternative on the right off the bench. So it's about having fresh legs. It's good, though, that we can't say this is what Liverpool will play. This will be their front three. Because mm-hmm. as effective as it was when you had Salah, Mane, Firmino for all those years, you want them to be unpredictable. You want them to challenge each other. The reason that they nearly won a quadruple last year was because they had so many senior international forwards who were rivaling each other. So you could rest legs. So they could go all the way in these competitions. And yeah, you'd just imagine Salah is still going to be one of the first names on the team sheet because he is that elite level player. But if the rest of them are competing... That's good news for Liverpool. They're going to be getting goals. They're going to be pushing each other on. And it means one of them can pick up the pieces as well when maybe Salah starts to decline as he gets a bit older. Not predicting that anytime soon. Long may the goals continue. I do wonder, though, if it's going to be like Sadio Mane in reverse. So he signed, was on the right wing, wasn't he, for his first season with Liverpool. And then he found his role on the left. Maybe it is Gapo do six months on the left. And then maybe him or Diaz will have to find a new role if they're starting start of like next season but we'll see it's good to have options rather than having it as just the three because we saw so many times when it was Firmino, Salah, Mane as great as they were together there was a big drop off when one of them had to miss a game yeah it's good to have that play first let him have a game (laughs) yeah just trying to map out his entire Liverpool career let's just see what happens (laughs) well it's good to have that unpredictability though and as Beth mentioned not just necessarily who starts week in week out actually interchangeability on the pitch because they can all sort of play down the middle, on the left, that fluidity and attack can be so important. Well, anyway, let's move on then to Wolves itself. Doyle will come to you. I expect you're going to be at Anfield tomorrow night covering the game. Am I correct? Uh, no, I'm not going. I don't want to go any more games. Yes, I am going to be there. <laughs> Having said that, our, our great colleague and friend Paul Gorst will not be there. It's me and Theo at the game oh, tomorrow. What a shame. No Gorsty. But anyway, Doyle, I'm going to ask you. On our own, aren't we, as well? Yeah, I think no one else is coming. Why doesn't anyone want to go to a football game at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night? Why, why would you not want to go to a football game at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night? I mean, In January. Earth, Don't forget who, the temperature. In January, yeah. The first weekend of January. Who on earth decided that? I mean, it's on. is it on ITV4? ITV4? ITV4. How, far, how far up your little planet do you have to go to get to that channel? Honestly? This is a... Yeah. Oh. The, good, the, great thing is that, the great thing is that the authorities are taking the FA Cup really seriously. And they you can watch away. some 70s police dramas and some retro snooker before and after the Liverpool game and don't if it's a nice before. Retro <laughs> snooker? Is that what's on? <laughs> I don't know. Hang on. Hang on. Before we go any further, before we go any further, before we go any further, what is retro to you? Name me a year that's retro to you. I mean, well, I was born in 99, Dolly, so anything before, anything in the 90s and before that probably is retro to me. I feel ill. 99. Yeah. <laughs> we need Theo, older hosts same, on this Same story. question to you, Theo. What's retro to you? Apart from your clothes. 70s and 80s. Se- 70s? You weren't alive in the 70s. Honestly. Yeah, that's why it's retro. 70 and eight, 70s and 80s. No, I suppose so. Nostalgia for the so. 90s. Oh, that's just so anyway, crazy. back to the matter at hand. Doily Wolves. <laughs> They've had a bit of a resurgence under Julian Lopetegui, a manager with a very decent CV. Are we expecting them to really bet for this and give us a bit of trouble? I mean, as all accounts, Liverpool aren't really that interested well, you beg to differ, but I don't think Klopp's on the... <laughs> yeah, Theo's not I, I that interested th- in it. Theo, I don't think Klopp's going to be prioritising the game <laughs> that much. I mean, do you think Wolves can potentially cause an upset? Do you think they'll go strong? I think there might be an upset in the sense that Liverpool might win. Um, because, <laughs> because look, they played Wolves twice at home in the FA Cup under Klopp and they lost both... Uh, sorry, they played them once at home and once away and they lost both times. So... Wolves are going for some kind of strange hat-trick here. You know, knocking knocking Liverpool out of the cup three times in... Would it be seven years? I think it'd be. I think it would be seven seasons, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it'd be seven seasons. So, I mean, Klopp gave away basically that they are going to go strong because they last played on Monday. They haven't got a midweek game. Not playing until next Saturday. They'll make some changes, but I'm pretty sure that they'll be uh, that they'll be going pretty strong. And I think they have to because while Theo doesn't want them to play any more games, 
clearly doesn't grasp the concept of a of a website. You're not enjoying the games either. Reliance on <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they need games to like fill, fill the gaps. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> no, nah, we just I need think, transfers. They don't need to actually no, play no, anything. No, 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 no. They need to get to the fourth round. So that's a, that's a free weekend. Otherwise, and that's always a nightmare. Um, so yeah, I think I think they've got to. Uh, they got to win. I think they need a good. I think they'll they'll have to put in a good performance after what happened at Brentford and Leicester. Actually, the last home game that wasn't particularly great either. So it will be interesting. I fully expect Liverpool to go strong. Yes. Listeners, if the Liverpool FA Cup tie isn't of interest to you, Theo's privately messaged me. Let me know that Doctor No is on ITV beforehand, so make sure you get on ITV four early to catch up with that one. I mean, Beth, I'm going to come to you. Do you think the FA Cup still has that magic and that significance? Obviously, Liverpool won it last year. There were some of the best days out in you know, recent Liverpool history, those days at Wembley, the semi-final springs to mind more than the final. But I mean, is it still important to you? Would you like to see Liverpool go all the way again? Yeah, of course. Sorry, that was a bit of a Steven Gerrard moment there. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, as, as you say, last season, it, it provided so many, so many good away days, so many memorable moments. And I think in a season which has otherwise been pretty bleak then going further in the FA Cup can can only be, be a good thing I think of course many Liverpool fans would probably you know rather prioritise top four and um, I'd be in that boat as well I think you know if it, if it comes at the expense of Liverpool getting top four I'd rather than not play more FA Cup games but I think you know they, they want to start strong and, and definitely bounce back from from Brentford and hopefully break that pattern of, of um, conceding the first goal as well. I mean, Wolves have struggled for goals this season, which means you know they're almost nailed on to score first at the top tomorrow. But um, but yeah, I think you know it would be it would be a good a good way to sort of bounce back from from Monday night if they were to to progress through to the next round. Yeah, you can almost see it now, can't you? Wolves going one look within five minutes. Probably someone does Diego, Diego Costa still play for Wolves? I know he signed for them recently. Is he still there? Is he injured? Dolly, do you know? He's still there, is he? Anyway, Theo, I'll come to you next on Team News. Klopp hinted they're going to go as strong as they possibly can, which maybe hints at some heavy rotation. I mean, you expect to see a few youngsters. We've been impressed recently with the likes of Bobby Clark by Chetich. Would you be giving any of those a chance? I'd start by Chetich, yeah. Let Fabinho have um, a night on the bench, at least. Bobby Clark, probably on the bench. Personally, I'd like to see Ben Dope given a first start take um, Salah out the firing line. Like Normally you'd have what, Harvey Elliott on the right or something like that, but he probably deserves a rest because he has been turned to so much and the pressure's on him at the moment. But when they've had these few days on the training pitch and Klopp says don't need to rotate, you'd expect the youngsters to be limited more to the substitute roles. But Pesetic has stepped on a bit more, hasn't he, than the other ones. He's played the most games. He's making telling impacts in Premier League games now. Seems like a good chance for him to come in and cement that place as the the backup at number six because the alternative is Jordan Henderson. I think Klopp said in his press conference that today will be his first day in training where he's allowed to do everything, assuming the medics are happy. So it's one where, yeah, he probably could start against Wolves, but you might want to tread a little bit more carefully with him considering some of Liverpool's injuries elsewhere. And there's a a few players you could say the same for, like Curtis Jones, um, I think Milner and Firmino. They're not back in training yet, are they? So touch and go if they are there so there's a few players you don't want to take unnecessary risks with yeah absolutely we'll move on to team selectors shortly but just before that Theo I want to ask you is the FA Cup still magic to you does it still have that history and that spellbinding feeling when you watch games in it um it it depends on the ties like this one isn't it's boring you're just playing a Premier League team if we're going to I don't know a non-league side or something you know something a bit different that's when you enjoy it more when there's that possibility of an upset though you don't want an upset but one of the best games Liverpool last season was that first half of the the FA Cup semi-final that was proper football at Wembley in the sun we could all enjoy it but then when Liverpool are going through this horrible moment at the moment um, I'd say I'd echo what Beth said you focus on getting in the top four and you'd rather knock out Real Madrid if that was by any means possible it's about getting into Europe They've won the FA Cup recently. They've won the League Cup recently. You only need to win it once or twice a decade to keep your appetite happy. You don't need to bother with it this year. Give it a few more years until we're feeling a bit nostalgic over it, until we want to win the Cups again. Premier League, top four, Champions League, they're now the priority. So we've won them now. We don't have to win them for another five years. Dolly, I'm sure you've got different views on this. He'll disagree. Dolly is obviously (laughs) disagreeing. Yeah, I think so. Let's, Let's just recap this. Theo said that he hopes... Liverpool could do with Liverpool could do without a game in the fourth round. <laughs> the this game is boring, and it's probably good to be nostalgic about winning something 
by not winning it for ages. Is that basically what you're saying? So don't win something for a thing. while, and then like, oh, it, it makes it all the more all better. Yeah, I'm sure all the players. <laughs> yeah, exactly. think exactly, I'm sure all the players think exactly the same thing. What are we doing? <laughs> don't want to win the FA Cup this year. I want to get nostalgic for our last time. I'm sure that's it. exactly why like Cody Gakpo comes to Liverpool because like exactly. he wants to win the FA Cup. He doesn't yeah. give a damn about anything else. It's, it's all about the FA Cup. He's actually well, going to not um, play against Real Madrid because it's all about this one. Joe Rimmer's not here, and he loves the League <laughs> Cup, and he's not going to be happy with those plans that were in the it came out of the times, wasn't it? That they're gonna yes, the suggestion is any team in Europe just plays a youth team in the in the League Cup, so he's not gonna be happy with that. But uh, he's not here, so tough. What was the question? <laughs> no, that was the question. <laughs> it was about the FA Cup. I love I, FA Cup. I love the FA Cup. Yeah, you are right a little bit. I suppose it's hard to get worked up for this game because of the timing of it and who they're playing, but. These are the games you've got to win if you're going to win it. And suddenly, if you win two games, like happened last season, it's like, well, hang on. Liverpool have been joining against Norwich at home. We can win that. Then they got Forest away, which is a lot easier in the FA Cup than the Premier League, clearly. And uh, <laughs> and then you're in the semi-final and anything can happen. So, no, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm all in on the FA Cup. I also think they should bring back all the replays and just make the players play forever. I think it would be amazing. <laughs> Some of the best games have been FA Cup replays. And you're, you three are looking at me going, what are you talking about? But... <laughs> You know, if you want more football, four that's, the way, that's the you way. You want to bring back those, you can have four replays in a row sort of yeah, thing. In the FA yeah, Cup's they'll just it. sort themselves out. They'll, they'll get it sorted eventually. Just let them play every other day. They get paid. I'd love to see you run that one past the clock. No, I've, just turned into <laughs> I've just turned into me dad there. Oh, they get paid enough money. Oh, yeah, whatever. Anyway. Anyway, let's move on then to our <laughs> team selector, Philip against Wolves in the FA Cup. Beth, we'll come to you first. I mean, we presume... Colin Kelleher may start and goal unless you've got any other suggestions for goalkeeper. But then if you'd like to run us through your back four. You just don't yeah, know. so I think I think as you say, I don't know if if it was confirmed early to say if, if Kelleher is starting, but you would assume that he he would start and deserves to start, absolutely. And yeah, I think just go as strong as possible with the back four. I'd, I'd play Trent. Um, what is, I don't know if... if Ian knows anything about Calvin Ramsey. What is the situation with him at the minute? He seems to have sort of disappeared. He, he trained. He trained on Thursday, so you have to assume he's going to be okay. Um, I mean, it'd be, be interesting to see him given a run out because I feel like we've not seen too much of him in a Liverpool shirt. But yeah, I do think strong as possible with the back four, apart from, you know, I wouldn't play Matip and Canate. I'd probably go, I don't know, maybe. I'd definitely give Nat Phillips a run out. Maybe, maybe Gomez. See how it goes. And then probably Andy Robertson. I think Simicast maybe didn't cover himself in glory at, at Brentford. So, yeah, I'd go Trent, Robbo, and then Nat Phillips with, with either Gomez or, or Matip or Canate. Theo, so, how about your back four? Um, Robertson starts. He's captain. Nat Phillips with Canate. I can get a bit of a rhythm. Um, hopefully put that Brentford game out of his mind. And then it's an interesting one at right back because part of you wants to see more of Calvin Ramsey. It's not really started for him yet at Liverpool because of injuries. He's only made a couple of appearances. I don't think he's played in the Premier League yet. So it seems like a good opportunity to give him a start. But he did get that injury, didn't he, in the mid-season training camp. So he missed the second friendly and he's not even been on the bench. I think that uh, appearance in training this week's the first time we've seen him back in training since then. So it's whether he's fit enough to start a game or you put him on the bench. Otherwise, it's Joe Gomez, like obviously you've got James Milner there as an alternative, he's back. But you'd imagine I'd rest Trent, so it's between Gomez or um Ramsey at right back. So I'll go Ramsey because no, sorry, I'll go Gomez because we don't exactly know how Ramsey's been, what the injury was or anything like that. And then Phillips here with um Canate at centre back. Yeah, it sounds like it could be next season until we see Calvin Ramsey. It's a good point you make as well about Canate because I think it's easier to slot in. Granted, it was a World Cup, but I think it's easier to slot in to an international team defence, whereas club football, you definitely need to get that rhythm back. I mean, Doyley, the back four, are you similar to the other two or are you going to throw us a bit of a curveball in there? No, they're, they're, the, they're all throwing the curveballs. <laughs> I mean, this is this is like a proper game, you know. It's not like a kickabout. Can I... Canati and Matip have to start at centre back because they're going to be the centre back, so they've already played together. So they're starting. Robertson obviously is going to start. Allison will be in goal, and then the right back probably won't be Trent. It'll be Gomez. Well, we'll stay with you then, Dolly. Then talk us through your midfield. I presume you're going equally strong with that one. No, because I'm so contrary. Uh, I'm going to have uh, <laughs> Henderson will play if he's fit, which I think he will be. Henderson will play. 
I think he'll play Baj Ketic or Baj Ketic or Baj Ketic or Baj Hedic or however it was. Somebody actually, to be fair, somebody actually tweeted us and said, you pronounce it by looking at his Wikipedia page and like pressing the thing and it says that, it, 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 you know, and I didn't do it. So I'll have to do that for next time. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Spanish Serb. And I think Curtis Jones will play as well. Beth, how about you for the midfield? Are you similar to what? Are you going to give Bacetic a run out or are you going to go yeah, stronger? I'd probably go go him and Henderson. Um, and then either Curtis Jones, obviously not seeing a lot of him of late, or I wouldn't mind giving Ox a run out in midfield. I think he's done, as you say, he did well when he came on, you know, on the wing. But now we've got Gakpo coming in. I, I always think Ox's best position is in, is in midfield. I know he maybe hasn't. You know, excelled there too much lately, but I'd quite like to give him a, give him a run out in midfield. I don't, I think he offers something a bit different. He offers that goal threat, and um, which I don't think too many of our other midfielders do. So either Curtis Jones or Ox to go alongside Hendo and and Bacetich. Yeah, nice, exciting attack in midfield there. <laughs> that was no, yeah, definitely not <laughs> very, that. very offensive. But definitely going to be goals in that game. I mean, to be fair, Ox said Chamberlain's impressed me out on the left. Theo, would you? Slot him into the midfield, or would you put him in the attack? If you talk us through midfield, then go on to your front three. Yeah, I'd have Ox in midfield. I think he's been one of Liverpool's best performers since the restart. And while it'd still be a surprise if he does enough to get a new contract when he's playing for him, he's playing well. He deserves to keep his place. It'd be quite nice to see him in his favoured position again. Like we're talking about all these issues Liverpool have had in midfield. Maybe fully for Ox can actually help things. Um, when I was doing the starting 11 changes earlier in the week, I had Naby Keita down to start, but now he seems to be what, missing in action. So we, so we don't know if he's going to be fit or anything like that. So if he's fit, I'd start him and then it'd be Besetic as the number six. If not, it's between Henderson and Curtis Jones. Now, one's coming back from concussion, one's coming back from an injury. It's who do you want to give the minutes to? Uh, Henderson's what, the more conservative choice. I'd like to see Curtis Jones give him a start, show you what you can do. And you've still got, what, the five subs. So if it's not going well, you can bring Henderson at half time to shore things up. We've seen Klopp do that in the past in these cup games, just bring on a load of experience half time to turn it around. But uh, we'll go for the, the players that don't play as often. So hopefully stake a claim. And then going on to your front three then, Theo? Oh, yeah. Front three. Uh, Gakpo on the left. Uh, it was a similar argument as Keita with Firmino. If Firmino was fit, I'd play him down the middle. But as he's not in training yet, I'll stick with Nunes. And I want to see Ben Doak start. I want to see, he's not going to play too much, you'd imagine, second half of the season. But this is one of the games where we can give him a proper run out, see what he's about. You know it's going to excite fans, even if it's only for what an hour and bring on someone a bit more experienced. Give him that opportunity in front of him. Anfield, under the lights, be a good opportunity to see what he can do. Oh, Gakpo, Nunes, Doak, that is an exciting front three. Doily, what are you thinking in attack for this one? Um, come on. Obviously, Chamberlain on the right, because he deserves a chance to actually play somewhere where he can actually play normally. Um, I don't think... Oh, do I? I don't know. Just having a conversation with myself here, don't mind me. Um, <laughs> Cavalio on the left, because everyone seems to have forgotten about him, so he can play. And then up front, it's either going to be Nunes or Gakpo. I think it'll probably be Nunes. I don't think Gakpo will start. I swear so you I said earlier be... you're only playing Gakpo on the left as well. Well, exactly. Well, I've, changed my mind. I've changed my so mind. So you've been contrary but... again. That's Sorry, not like 40... you. We've been, 40 <laughs> minutes is a long time in football podcasts. You know what I mean? So um, We've still got the 15 yeah, so... minutes of stoppage time that we've got used to at the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be gone by then. You, you can have a chance for yourselves. <laughs> um, Cavalio on the left. Um, Oxford Chen on the right. Yeah, and Nunes down the middle. That's, that's Darwin about... Nunes, not, not the other Darwin Nunes. Nunes. Yeah. Not Mateus Nunes, who they're going to sign no. and then play. No. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Beth, how about yourself? You mentioned uh, the interchangeability you'd like to see between Nunes and Gakpo. Are you starting the two of those in your attack, or are you similar to Dolly giving a rest? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see Gakpo starting, but I would quite like him to start. Um, he's obviously had, you know, the week to sort of get up, up to speed in, in training. I'd probably go with Theo, actually. I think uh, Gakpo on the left, Nunes through the middle, and um, Ben Doak on the right, actually. I really I really liked him when he came on against Villa. He's not going to get too many opportunities. And then you've always obviously got Salah on the bench to come on if, if things aren't going going a certain way. And, and Carvalho, I do think he is, he's the forgotten man, isn't he, really, at the minute? And I don't think anyone quite knows what his best position is. But, yeah, I'd go Gakpo, Nunes and Ben Doak. Yeah, we are going to see Matthias that. Nunes at Anfield, though, this weekend. Oh, do you, do, do you know wise. the Wolves team? Do you know the Wolves team? 
It seems involved. <laughs> <laughs> imagine if they're treating this game to the way you're treating it. Ah, oh, this is so boring. We're just gonna we're just gonna play Steve Bull up front. You know, he's about sixty-five, so you know that kind of thing. So I will say, I really hope Newcastle take the cup seriously this year because they'll do a Leicester if they actually go far in one of the domestic cups. They're messing up the league. Mm, yeah, very so they can take it seriously. Yeah. We'll leave it to them. Yeah. <laughs> Those other teams chasing the top four can take it seriously, but not Liverpool, in the words of Theo <laughs> Squires. Well, then let's finish off the podcast with our predictions. Dolly will come to you first. How do you think this one's going to go? Uh, nil nil. And is, the replay... is, nil nil is the kind of <laughs> score that would just sum everything up. I don't think it'll be nil nil. You know what? I don't know. You know, come back to me in a minute. We'll return to you then, Theo. It's extra time and penalties, isn't it? We don't have replays this no, early on. It's replays. There are replays, yeah. Replays, yeah. Oh, we brought them back just this year, have we? Oh, They've come back this they year. Just didn't have, they just didn't have them for last year or whatever it was the year before. Yeah. 2-1 um, um, Liverpool reluctantly go through to the fourth round. Beth, how about yourself? 1-0 Liverpool. Don't we leave you had any further thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to go with one all because the food at Wolves is quite good. I wouldn't mind going there for a second time this season. <laughs> You're hoping that happens and then they make the rule change to have uncontinued replays and they play replays against Wolves until June. Is that your? You were saying earlier as well that you were looking forward to a midweek without a match. Well, you've just taken that away. <laughs> well, hang on. The midweek's next with the one coming up. So there you go. Can't have too many of them. Can't have too many. <laughs> well, we'll leave it there. Listeners, make sure to give us your thoughts on the FA Cup in the comments below on our YouTube channel. But we'll wrap it up there. A big thank you to our guests for today, Ian Doyle, Theo Squires and Beth Lindop. And of course, a huge thank you to all of you for listening and watching along as well. Check out all the written content from the guys here at the Liverpool Echo site. And of course, be sure to subscribe and keep up to date with all of our content here at Blood Red. Both on our YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcasts from, we've got things such as Young Cross Press Conference, amongst loads of other pre-match build-up ahead of Liverpool versus Wolves on Saturday. But for now, we'll leave it there. You can catch myself and Theo, I believe, from Anfield for the debrief live tomorrow. Is that correct, Theo? Will no, because be there's me? no Gorsty. I won't be joining you. You'll uh, need to get Matt on for that. Well, it'll be me and Matt <laughs> Addison then tomorrow <laughs> for the debrief, everyone. But until then, from myself, Patrick Smith, Ian Doyle, Theo Squires, I'm Beth Lindup. Thank you for joining us, and it's goodbye for now. <laughs>